Uh, my name is Delaria Snelli. Uh, I am a final PhD student at NUI Geo Galway and I'm working in biomedical engineering. Um, my specialization is computational modeling, so um, developing a brain uh, model for understanding concussion and diseases. So I'm trying to connect uh, electricity and mechanical deformation together in order to figure out better what's going on when you have a disease. Uh, computational uh, models are powerful tools to describe what's happening inside any kind of object, which in my case is a cell, which are neural cells. Okay, uh, nerves deform when they conduce electricity, so when they communicate with each other. And this type of deformation are a key point when you have concussion. So when you deform a brain and because you have an injury, you have a concussion or you have a tumor or something, you are actually, you impose a permanent pressure on the nerves, which is mean that you change the way in which they naturally deform during signaling. And uh, so I'm trying to understand how we can like look at the nerve from um, an electrical point of view to enhance the um, um, treatment for concussion. So in the separate part, I am uh, teaching on the, the college as lecturer for uh, GIFs students at the Youth Academy. And uh, then I'm doing space research, mainly about um, human behavior, human performance, a human factor in confined environment, which are the Mars mission. And I'm trying to um, improve my skills uh, to be selected as a crew member for the Mars mission. I'm reading a lot of like um, uh, aerospace medicine and uh, space medicine book to understand whether the um, physiological adaptation of the human body with our gravity just because you know we need it and um, so that's the whole thing. Those, those two life, PhD and space research are for me in parallel and that's really challenging because this means that I have to spend all of my free time during the weekend keep doing working on that because they require time. They are my babies, right? That's, that's the thing, okay? <laughs> so I'm trying to do that. And I got lucky because uh, it's been very successful and I'm starting to get involved in different fields between the two of them. And so that's my whole life. I was always interested in maths. I like maths, a lot of maths. And you do mainly maths when you are in, uh, in the secondary school. And I like also biologists. I was obsessed, and I'm still obsessed with surgery. So when I was going to make a choice for my university, I thought like, uh, okay, medicine or engineering. And I recognize that I do not have the personality for being a doctor, a medical doctor. Just because you gotta listen to a lot of people, you gotta understand people. And I do like more making things and, uh, you know, undo and understand how nature works. So I thought like, okay, let's start with engineering. I start with that. And my main goal uh, was to be an assistant of a, of, a, of a medical doctor during surgery to, you know, build devices inside someone. So to, to you know, to help them during this process. But then, when I, when I was doing my, during my bachelor, I was studying sur uh, surgery, medical robotics, uh, mechatronics, and I was always wondering, you know, like, because it, it, it's, a, it's a requirement for the university, how could you improve that? So I was like trying to think and push myself. So uh, it was a summer night, I took a break, and I was, study for, I was actually studying for an exam there, and I was outside on my balcony, and I look at the moon and I thought like, okay, what if I were there? What's the change in my life? What's the change in, in medical devices? And I thought like, well, that's completely different because we don't have gravity. I mean, all the things that I've been studying until that moment, I was based on gravity force, but if you remove gravity, that's a totally different thing. It won't work. So it was, what if, and from that summer, I started to study everything about aerospace medicine, that's why, I moved to London to King's College to, to work there. And uh, the reason which I want to do is that I want to bring innovation in that field just because I deeply believe that all the efforts and all the research for aerospace medicine can bring back to Earth 
to enhance medical care and medical treatment. So it's not space is not only for space itself, it's space to enhance the life on Earth and make it affordable to all the people. And that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to contribute to this field, which is very challenging. So it's a matter of keep going. That's why I'm, I'm here. And uh, I want to do a PhD, I want to improve my skills, I want to be a complete engineer. You need to work with someone, you need to work in teamwork, you need to understand different fields. You need to challenge yourself. You go, we got a life, one life, and I want to challenge myself, and my challenge is space, and I'm, and I'm doing that. <laughs>
So a trip to Mars, it's uh, about 30 months, okay? Which is a, a very long uh, period of time. So we need to uh, train people to stay away from the Earth for that period, for 30 months. So you need to make sure that they will um, have a proper use of the resources. They, that there won't be any abuse of resources, any abuse of water, of electricity or food. The key point is to make sure that the human behavior will be stable. They do not know how human interaction in a confined environment um, if it's going to be successful or not. So they want to make sure that human behavior is, will be set first. So where I've been, I've been to the Mars Desert Research Station, which is in the middle of the Utah Desert. So you are in the middle of the desert, a three hour by car, far away from the nearest town, with, uh, and you, you live there for a period of weeks with a fixed amount of drinkable water um, dehydrated food, um, electricity, a pure communication. So you actually, you sign the paper that this is a very dangerous place. Aside the mountain lions, they are there. This is dangerous for life because, you know, when people, they don't have resources, they, um, they just like lose the main goal of the mission, which is science. They only think about themselves. They want to survive. So we start to, people became aggressive, okay? And it's happened previously. And uh, people became aggressive, they abuse food, they abuse their resources, they abuse the water, because it's their need. They try to um, use resources to feel something that they are missing. In this case, it's the freedom of interaction with other humans. So this Mars analogue mission helps scientists to understand uh, potential problems and risk that a, a Mars owner might, like you know, face during the Mars on a, during the real Mars mission. So uh, I took part to two missions. So I did one month of isolation in the um, uh, one total month of isolation in um, at the Mars as a research station. And the first time that I was there, I thought like, okay, um, I wanna I wanna challenge myself. I wanna see if I can be. Uh, I'm a biomedical engineer, but I want to see if I can push my engineering skills to cover all the disciplines, so uh, to fix everything there, to fix mechanical stuff, electrical stuff, or whatever is needed. And I was the most happy person ever in my life, seriously. I was free to think about innovation, think about design, to fix, to play. And for me, that was a kind of game because that's, I was free to do whatever I want to do there. And I felt so happy because you let it go all the, you know, all the engineers uh, skills I had. So that was, that, was, that was great. And then when I, when I was commander, that was different because then you had to really think about pre-mission training, training during the mission and post-mission debriefing, which is a very long process. And you, you are responsible of everything. You know, being a commander is mean that if someone is, uh, is uh, having a hard time there, you are responsible for that. If there is any aggressive behavior, you are responsible. And uh, if um, you, do, you are not productive, or from a scientific point of view, which is me, if you do not conclude all of your project within that period of time, you are responsible for all of your crew members, which is a great responsibility to have it there. So it's not only be happy and it's like it's just a game of be a commander. There are responsibility behind. And the reason for which I was really happy about it is that they told me, well, we want you as commander. For, for us, you are the emerging space leader, uh, which is a great title to have. But uh, above all, um, you can train in leadership for the Mars mission. So I thought like, okay, I like leadership. I have skills in leadership. I want to try to do my best for the Mars mission. So I really plan it as it has to be. So uh, I told you like pre-mission debriefings, mission training during the mission and post-mission debriefing is a very uh, big amount of work to do and to manage. Just because my crew was made by amazing people, but they were all around the world. So it's hard to connect together, to interact together because we go back to the same point. I was commander, but I am a girl. So people do not take you seriously. And during the mission, you gotta fix the point before getting the hub and training for the mission.
So whenever you know how to deal and, you, and to manage in, in, and to teach to the other um, the position you have, that is done. To learn that is a long process. It's, it's, um, it's a long process to learn um, how to teach to the other the respect that you want and you deserve. Yeah, the very last thing. There are, there are people, there are women, that they, um, for some reason, they are fragile and they think that whenever they have a hard time, they can use the female way to do, to get things. Uh, just want to say, do not do that. Because there are billions of people, like me, they are pushing women and respect for women in science, but in society itself, and, uh, and that's a shame. So even if you want or you think that you might can get things easier through your um, attitude, female attitude, I do not do that. Absolutely do not do that. Just face it once, and then you see that the way is much easier than you thought before. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay. <laughs>